Hi, uh, I'm Len Witt, and I'm here with Nancy Gannon uh, Hornberger, and she's the executive director of the Coalition for Juvenile Justice, and they're just in the sort of last stages of completing their spring 2011 national convention. And uh, Nancy, why don't you tell me what the theme is this year and why it's important? We chose to focus, Len, on fair and equal justice through looking at alternatives to sentencing and also facility-based or institutional sanctions for youth. So alternatives would be alternatives to incarceration and detention. I can describe some of those. But to really keep young people um, at various levels of risk, so um, nonviolent offenders as well as violent offenders, in the least restrictive possible environment that would be most productive for them to really get back on track, to develop pro-social skills, to re-engage in school, and to have more positive peer and family relationships. So how, how do you uh, explain to people who are worried, oh my gosh, this kid's a little criminal and you're going to, you know, be easy with him or her and they're just going to create more crimes? Well, these are my dinner party conversations because okay. it's fascinating to see what the research tells us, which is... I think makes sense to parents, but maybe it hasn't gotten out as a sort of uh, broad understanding. What the research tells us is that if we can have children and teenagers who are still developing in a setting that is as normal as possible in the sense of positive, normal family life, positive, normal peer relationships, relationships with positive, normal, caring adults, that that normative environment, so that may be a smaller setting than a large incarceration setting. It may be a um, structured setting where there's a lot of adult supervision, but it's not a lockup. That those settings where it's based on relationships rather than bars and chains are much more helpful to kids developmentally, and as a result, they are safer human beings, both to themselves and society. So when you think, okay, that sounds like a jailbreak. Well, it isn't. In fact, it's good rehabilitation and it improves community safety. And it also is so much more effective in terms of individual lives being spared, victims being spared, and taxpayer dollars being saved. So this whole conference is oriented toward what we're now finding in research and in practice to be very productive. Keep the kids out of these heavy duty lockups as much as possible. So, is anyone policymakers, especially looking at that, sure. uh, and thinking about it, and actually making changes? Do you see any? Well, you do positive? across certain states. I think one of the most productive and well-known examples is Reclaim Ohio. I don't know if others have mentioned that to you, Len, but what they decided to do in Ohio was to reduce their corrections commitments for youth. So then again, you know, policymakers, victims, families, others in Ohio. A fairly conservative state we're saying what do you mean reduce corrections placements don't all these kids need to be there don't they need to be incapacitated and away from society well that's question one you look at your population and corrections and in fact many of them were there for charges that did not necessitate them being locked up they could go into community probation with intensive um, check-ins and case management they could go into smaller settings where they had more human contact and the results were so much better plus they're actually less expensive placements so then the other thing the reclaim piece was reclaiming lives but it was also reclaiming dollars so that those dollars could be put toward more therapists more counselors more family support more employment readiness programs. Were those so, dollars really going in that direction or in, in were Ohio, they getting siphoned away somewhere in, in, else? In Ohio, in fact, the policy um, was cast in such a way that they were required to spend those dollars on productive community placements. And so as a result, they've decreased their rate of juvenile offending, decreased recidivism. I don't exactly have the percentages in mind but they have 40% fewer kids going into locked corrections in Ohio. They're saving a huge amount of money. Um, now they're going to look at the risk factors for kids in detention and see if more of them can be in community placements. 
and they're taking those dollars and they're putting them into emergency shelter care, foster care training, um, mental health services, and as I mentioned, things like employability skills and, and uh, highly structured uh, probation. And they're finding that's just, the, the results from that are so much more positive. So that's just one state that's done it. Um, similar innovations are occurring all across the country now, Indiana, New York, even Texas. Perfect.